Welcome to this second lecture about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. In this lecture we will learn how to calculate eigenvectors and eigenvalues for a simple 2x2 two two matrix. From the previous lecture about eigenvectors and eigenvalues, we know that the following two vectors are eigenvectors of matrix A. Remember that an eigenvector is a vector that satisfies the following equation. This equation tells us that if we multiply matrix A by an eigenvector, we'll get a new vector, which is equal to the original vector times some scaling factor. This scaling factor is called an eigenvalue. For example, if you multiply matrix A by the first vector, we get a new vector that is two times longer than the original vector. Note that both vectors still have the same direction. If you multiply matrix A by the eigenvector V2, we get a new vector that points backwards and the eigenvalue is therefore equal to negative 1. An eigenvector is any vector that satisfies this equation. In our previous example we see that we will get the same vector when we multiply matrix A by vector V2 as if we multiply vector V2 by negative 1. We'll now see how we actually can calculate these two eigenvectors of matrix A. Let's multiply the right hand side of this equation by the following identity matrix with the same number of rows and columns as matrix A so that we have a 2 by 2 matrix on both sides. We then have the following equation. Next we move all terms to the left hand side in the equation. Note that this represents a zero vector. Next we pull out V from the two terms on the left hand side. Note that this is just a matrix calculated by matrix A minus the identity matrix times the eigenvalue. This equation tells us that if you multiply vector V by this matrix, we should get a zero vector. To isolate vector V on the left hand side, imagine that we then would multiply by the inverse of the matrix on both sides so that vector v is equal to the zero vector which is the trivial solution. However, remember that an eigenvector should be a non-zero vector. Thus, we like to find a solution where this matrix is not invertible which means that no inverse of this matrix should exist. Remember from the previous lecture about matrices that if the determinant of a matrix is equal to zero then we cannot compute its inverse. This means that the determinant of this matrix should be equal to zero. To find an eigenvector of matrix A, we must therefore first find an eigenvalue so that the determinant of the following matrix is equal to zero. Let's plug in matrix A and the identity matrix times lambda in the equation. 
Note that this matrix is the identity matrix times the eigenvalue. Then we subtract the second matrix from matrix A, so that we get the following matrix. We now seek possible values for lambda, so that the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. In other words, the product of these elements minus the product of these elements should be equal to zero. Let's multiply one minus lambda by negative lambda. So that we get the following expression. After some simplifications, we get the following equation, which is a quadratic equation. There are different ways to solve quadratic equations. However, such calculations will not be covered in this lecture. If we instead plot how the left hand side changes as a function of lambda, we get the following plot, where we can see that the function is equal to zero if lambda is set to either negative one or two. If you substitute lambda with either two or negative one, the left hand side should therefore be equal to zero. Our two eigenvalues are therefore two and negative one. After we have calculated the eigenvalues, we can calculate the eigenvectors of matrix A. Let's first calculate the eigenvector with a corresponding eigenvalue of 2. We substitute lambda by 2 so that we have the following equation. Then we insert the elements of matrix A and define V as a column vector with the elements X and Y. We want to find the values of x and y so that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. We multiply matrix A by vector v and multiply vector v by 2 so that we get the following system of equations. If we simplify this system a bit both equations tell us that y should be half the value of x in order for the left hand side to be equal to the right hand side. Thus, any vector that points in this direction will work because if x increases by 1, y increases by 0 0.5. For example, we see that the following vector is an eigenvector because if we set y equal to 2, x is equal to 4. The following vector is therefore an example of an eigenvector of matrix A. We'll now do the same calculations based on the second eigenvalue so that we can find the second eigenvector of matrix A. The difference is that we now multiply the right hand side by negative 1 instead of 2. So that we have the following system of equations. After some simplifications, we see that if we set x equal to 1, y is equal to negative 1. Any vector with the following direction is an eigenvector of matrix A because if x is reduced by 1, y is increased by 1. For example, the following vector is an eigenvector of matrix A. In conclusion, the following two vectors with associated eigenvalues are eigenvectors of matrix A. Let's check that the first eigenvector with its corresponding eigenvalue satisfies this equation.
We plug in matrix A and the first eigenvector into the left hand side of this equation. Multiplying matrix A by the eigenvector results in a vector that is twice as long as the original vector. However, note that both vectors have the same direction. We can rewrite the right hand side to this. We see that we satisfy the equation since multiplying matrix A by the vector results in a new vector that is equal to the original vector multiplied by the corresponding eigenvalue. This was the end of this lecture about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In another lecture we'll discuss how eigenvalues and eigenvectors are used in the principal component analysis.